Hello, um, yeah, I'm the MASH um, Strategic Harm Reduction Analyst in Devon. And really, my role as the analyst is to identify those children, families, and locations most at risk of future harm, with a view to enabling um, our partner agencies to more effectively target their resources um, and start to develop harm reduction strategies to reduce the level of risk kind of associated with those families and locations. And really, um, the, in the MASH analytical function within Devon, it kind of sits at two levels. It sits at the more operational, tactical level, and then at a strategic level. And at the operational uh, level, we have, as, as Simon mentioned, developed the MASH family profile meeting. And then alongside that, we're starting to look to further develop um, the early risk matrix, which um, should enhance our ability to um, identify and predict harm at a much earlier stage. And then at the strategic level, um, our work really focuses on um, providing the geographic and social demographic analysis overlaid against the risk, risk factor analysis that, um, that's, that we're getting out from the MASH data. So we can actually start to say, have we got the right services in the right places, or do we even have the right services to begin with? So the MASH family profile meeting, that focuses mainly on uh, three main types of cases. So the first type of case that we focus on is um, our kind of top repeat cases, those ones that uh, just keep on coming back through the MASH time and time again, um, those kind of persistently problematic families. And then the second type of case is the uh, early intervention cases. So they might have only come through the MASH once or twice and then been no further actioned, um, but actually the risk factors within that family as a whole suggest that they're going to become one of our top repeat cases in the future. And then the third type of case that we're looking at is the, the missing cases, the, the missing children. And they can either be a kind of top repeat missing children or those, once again, where they've only gone missing once or twice, but actually the risk factors suggest that they're going to be, carry on going missing. And obviously there's those clear links to ch child sexual exploitation and actually other things like uh, your drug running networks as well. So in pushing that kind of work further forward, we're looking to develop this early risk matrix um, to say that actually, yes, we know that these are kind of our main blaringly <laughs> obvious risk factors. But actually, if we're talking about early intervention, then what are those early indicators that actually lead into those toxic risk factors? There's been a whole load of research uh, done about domestic abuse. So we know those kind of like what kind of factors might make some, a family more vulnerable to domestic abuse. And that's where we really need to be looking and targeting and really looking at what combination of those early indicators um, and, and weighting those factors to say what the families are most at risk of future harm. So within the MASH um, family profile meeting, how, how we've um, utilised the partnership intelligence is by providing a written profile and an associated multi-agency timeline to really enable um, effective coordinated partnership action planning. And within the written profile of, of the family, we break it down into key themes. So things like domestic violence, mental health, whether the family has evidence of lack of engagement. And then we follow that with a risk analysis broken down for each agency. So the risks for each agency are really clear. And then, of course, we identify our intelligence requirements of the future and make a load of recommendations about how to intervene. And then alongside that written profile, we create a multi-agency timeline which charts all the different agencies' interactions with that, um, with that case, with that child. And what we found is that been really, um, really effective with, with our partner agencies in showing the visual impact, particularly with our top repeat cases, of how much agency involvement there's been with a particular family um, and, and what interventions have taken place. And actually helps partner agencies to take a step back and look at the entire case history um, and, really, and, and really think, okay, what can we do and, and what can we do differently this time? So then at the, at the strategic um, level, um, we've just started to evaluate the MASH Family Profiles meeting and we've already seen some really key, uh, key strategic messages and key themes come out of it. So we've had things like... Um, over-optimistic kind of plans of closure of cases at level three child protection. Um, we've really seen a kind of clear focus on the presenting issue that comes through on an inquiry, inquiry but less of a looking at the case history and the, 
as a whole or the risks within the family as a whole. Um, and the kind of a lack of a de-escalation de kind of level three child protection cases down to, down to level two more consent-based interventions. And also what, one of the strategic measures is that's just starting to come out is actually there does seem to be a bit of a gap in service provision between those like level three child protection cases and those uh, level two services for those families that are persistently problematic and are well known to not want to engage with families. And the other piece of work that we're doing, as I said before, is, is, is type of, uh, using that risk factor analysis and overlaying it against that social and geographic demographic analysis. And we're starting to do that for early years and childcare services, looking particularly at um, not to five year olds. Um, and that's really where we need to be pushing um, our work, is, is to find out what exactly the picture of harm looks like for our 0 to 5 year olds if we want to actually um, truly be able to intervene at a much earlier stage. And then finally, um, we're looking at um, developing some costings work. So using that multi-agency timeline um, to visually show all of the agency's interactions with that case and then overlaying that with a cum cumulative cost um, for a most needy family. And we're hoping that will be quite a powerful tool um, to really show the benefits of intervening early um, to our kind of strategic commissioners. And then finally, just want to say that really the analytical potential of the match is, is vast. And if we truly want to kind of tackle the issues like child sexual exploitation, um, then we have to carry out um, a multi-agency analysis on that work because it is a multi-agency problem.